everyone. We're about ready to get started. My name is Eduardo Osorio here. We got Dr. Chong coming up to bless us with some words. All right, here you go, Dr. Chong. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, how's everybody doing? What a great day today, 100 years. I feel like 100 years old after the last two weeks. <laughs> I'm really feeling um, blessed and really a gratitude for today, this wonderful project that was led by Hillary, Amber, Serena Ross, and our former student trustee. Let's give them a big round of applause. You know, art has always been a very big part of Santa Rosa Junior College. I see many members of the art department here. You know, the gallery. Yeah, the art department. And art really speaks to our culture and our campus. And art continues to be and always will be, I think, a major part of Santa Rosa Junior College. Because we have so many talented art instructors. We have so many talented art students. And Michael McGinnis, who I'm out to introduce, is a wonderful, creative, generous person uh, who has uh, done very well professionally, but his love, I think, is really doing what he, we're going to see today, and that's inspiring students to do more than they can, and that's why we have the best faculty in the entire world at Santa Rosa Junior College. Please join me in introducing Michael McGinnis. I hardly ever do this, but I actually made some notes. <laughs> My students know I never do anything with notes. It's always just on the fly. So I just wanted to first tell you what the piece is called. It's called Veritas, which means truth. And it's, it's about sort of our, our striving as faculty and as students to seek truth in life and to, to look to feedback <laughs> from faculty and students. <laughs> And to, uh, to, to try to explore what is our life about, what's the world about, how do we interact with each other, what's a good way to, uh, to move your life forward. And um, I would like to be able to unwrap this by having my students who worked on it come on over and do that. And um, while they're doing that, I'll just tell you a couple of things. The first thing is, that uh, I had a really wonderful experience going to, uh, I, I, was in, I was at Sonoma State University at this point, and uh, my instructor had us go to San Francisco and help install the Holocaust piece at the uh, Legion of Honor by George Siegel. So I got to work on that piece, and it was like a formative experience for me. And so giving my students the same chance to do something that's in public is really a wonderful thing. As, as you know, uh, this school's been here for 100 years now. I've strangely been a part of it for a third of the, that time period. <laughs> and that, that means there are a lot of us who've been here for that long, and some people who've been here longer than that, which means that 100 years is not very long. But it's, it, it, it was 100 years ago where people, people that were here at the JC knew nothing about World War II. They didn't know anything about spacecraft. They didn't know anything about cell phones. They didn't know about Donald Trump. They, they didn't know anything about what we really experienced today. And now that's very, very hard to fathom that they didn't know that because what do we not know about what's going to happen in the future? And I just remember this incredible instructor here at the junior college who taught uh, astronomy, Jerry Waxman. I was taking his class and he said, everything I'm teaching you is a lie because Someone's going to discover the truth or, or something else in the future, and we don't know what truth is. And this represents that, that feeling. And so if you look at the piece, you can see this huge amount of convoluted forms. Uh, that is a superplexus. It's something that I've been creating for a long period of time, this, this theoretical sort of form. And it represents us as students, as faculty, all sort of coming together, and all the parts are necessary as a whole to, to make our institution. And without the individual parts, you wouldn't have the whole. So, so we are sort of interlocked in this, in this uh, experiment. And uh, it also, it, it, it has a few elements which are sort of a di dichotomy, I guess. Um, it's this whole, and it's, it's 
inextricably connected together, but it's also in an explosion. It's like exploding outward, but it's being pulled back together. It's kind of like the position we're in right now. We're at this place where we're both at a precipice and we're at a, a, the forefront of something incredible. And it can go either way. And so when we look at this piece, or I'm hoping that you do, when you're looking at the piece walking around the campus in the future, you go, this is like a frozen moment of what life was like now for us here and how we really have the ability to strive for a better future. And then the time capsule, it's an incredible thing to have done because it's, it's a gift for 100 years from now. And to be able to say, this is what we were thinking, this is how we feel, this is, in fact, people have brought this up, why, why not protest here, why protest? There's an important thing to, to have the ability to express yourself, right? And this time capsule represents that this is what's happening now. It's important to keep that alive and to know for the future how to deal with things. So I just wanted to thank a few people. You know, Kerry Lowen came to me and he says, uh, Michael, do you want to work on the time capsule project? I go, okay. <laughs> um, and then, and, you know, but why, you know, why do a lid or something that buries in the ground? Why not do something that stands up and is, is visible? Because then the students can participate. And, and my students really came through on this because they, they sat there and sanded, I would say a mile and a half of sanding to get this done. And that's not an exaggeration. And they, they, they got holes in their fingers and they you know, suffered, but they worked really hard at it. And so I'm very proud of them for doing this because they, they got to do something that I love to do. And they know that that's how you are too. As, as teachers, as students, you, you are sharing in this kind of family experience. So uh, anyway, thank you so much for coming here. And um, we'd like to... Hillary, would you like to come up, Hillary? Thank you. Yes, one more thing, I just have a, a list of names. Uh, of course, Hillary Zarati, who is uh, who has really spearheaded this along with Amber Cushing. Where is Amber over here somewhere? Uh, she's way back there. Who who helped spearhead this entire program? Um, Matthew and Eli from the engineering club, and there were a few more engineering students who got to. Uh, to build the base for this. And they did this, I would think they did this completely on their own. They created something from scratch that they'd never done before. That's an incredible base they've created. And the, the, the capsule inside. And then uh, Sabrina Rawson and, uh, and Fran Byrne who are on the committee to get this going. So thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, Michael. Let's give a big round of applause for him. Two more speakers, Eli and Matthew from the Engineering Club, Tech. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming out today and being here with us. When uh, we were approached by Amber last semester to do this project, we were really excited and really honored that the JC felt that the Tech Club was you know, the right group of people to get this job done. So we hopped on the opportunity and we came in and what we did is we had a competition between all of our engineers to submit ideas and whichever idea we voted on to be the best idea, um, you know, was gonna be the individual who would kind of spearhead the project. So you know, everyone kind of submitted designs and Eli here submitted a 3D model. And I think from that point on, we knew he was the right guy for the job. <laughs> so he came in and just put you know, 110% of effort into every step of the process. He was building forms in his free time, uh, coming out here and pouring concrete with me. And, you know, we did all this work and, you know, not for a moment did I hear any hesitation or complaining. He was just such a, you know, a pivotal part of this whole process. And um, so he's gonna tell you a little bit more about the design and give you a little insight of where he, his mind was at when he chose to do what he did for the, uh, the base here. Got some notes here. Um, all right, so I'm Eli Luters. Um, I'm a me mechanical engineering student. I've been here for uh, two years now. Um, and I joined the tech club this year, and I'm the treasurer of it. And um, yeah, we started this project, it was December. It, it was when we first tried to, you know, we first heard about it and started coming up with ideas. And I think the, the general design of the, of the structure of the, of the base 
sort of came out of out of necessity of what it needed to, to do. It needed to hold a big container. You know, we knew roughly the size it needed to be. We knew it probably needed to be made out of concrete. Um, and we wanted it, you know, somewhat symmetrical, cylindrical. But then from there, it was all just, you know, it was up to us what we did after that. And um, one thing I wanted to avoid was trying to use, you know, rounded sides because I knew that would be harder to build molds for. Um, and I knew, I, I, you know, we would be building the molds for it. So we went ahead and did kind of a ten-sided shape with, you know, every other side being, you know, as you can see, there's there's some depth to it. Um, that was just kind of thought of that in the moment of I was designing it using a 3D modeling software. And um, and then from there we refined the design just to make it a little easier to build uh, because along the way we were like, this is going to be really hard to build. And even, <laughs> and even with the simplified design, it was still quite the process. Um, I mean, we had, uh, it's about a, the last month was just purely, uh, yeah, it was, building the molds was the main the main thing for for the concrete, um, and then also the capsule. The capsule itself was kind of, you know, we spent all this time working on the on the concrete, and we're like, wait a minute, we need a capsule. Uh, that's important too, and so we um, so we got we got some metal for that, and and then we kind of handed that over to the the welding department. They they did a lot of that for us. Um, ben was was really awesome. He was totally up for helping us weld the container and, and, the, and the lid and getting everything ready to go. And that was a huge help. And, um, and then we had a lot of people from Tech Club, everyone, I mean, we had a ton of help. Even people who just was, were walking by, you know, in their, in their nice clothes from school, they're like, hey, I'll help you pour concrete. It was really awesome. <laughs> um, and then a lot of support, even outside the Tech Club. It, it was amazing. It was a really cool process. And um, I'm really glad to be part of it. And I'm excited to do something like this again uh, soon. I don't know what it'll be, but I'll be I'll be the one helping out too. So yeah. Thank you. I just want to say a few more words. I'm Hilary Zarati. I'm the manager in student life, and I'm representing the 100th anniversary leadership group. And this really was our most student-led project. Uh, we had, of course, our alt art sculpture students working on the um, art sculpture, and then we had, you know, our tech students working on the base and time capsule. I have a list of items that were put into the time capsule. We also photo um, did a photo documentary of it, and so that will be published soon. We'll probably go we also have to do a plaque installation, which will probably be more in September. Um, but I did want to thank a few people. Um, we have a lot of um, funding sources for this because it wasn't really in the budget. Um, but I want to thank uh, Board President Maggie Fishman for supporting us. Um, uh, Trustee Jordan Burns for donating. We had the uh, it's funded by a grant from the SRJC Foundation Randolph Newman Cultural Enrichment Endowment Grant, our Student Life Trust, and the 100th Anniversary Mini Grants um, helped make this possible. And I just want you to know that um, I'm sincerely appreciative of um, Instructor McGinnis because these this is commissioned for um, between twenty to sixty thousand dollars all over the world. He's about to send one over to Australia, and um, it's just so amazing his generosity. And um, I really want to thank you, Michael, for this. So, on behalf of the hundredth anniversary uh, leadership group, thank you all for coming. Please come see some pictures and what was in the contents and. Um, just thank you very much. We're going to open it up again in 2118, 100 years from now.